So the first cell phone that I ever bought was a Motorola StarTac flip phone. The year was 1999. I was 19 years old. I was the first person that I knew to actually have a cell phone. I was an early adopter. And like any early adopter, I had to deal with some hiccups with the technology when it was still in its infancy. That thing barely worked. It dropped calls left and right. But in spite of the drop calls, it was the first step in my journey towards the relationship that I currently have with my smartphone, which is that I don't leave my house without it. I want you to think for a second about your smartphone. When was the last time you even thought about it? It's in your hand or in your pocket all the time. You never leave your house without it. It's so integrated into your life that you never even think about it. What if I were to tell you that in the near future, you'll have the same relationship with augmented reality glasses? You put them on in the morning, you wear them all day long, you won't even think about them, but they'll change the way that you perceive the world and how you gather information. My name is Steve Kaufman, and I'm with State of Brothers Markets. And today, it is my privilege to introduce to you Team Revolutionizing Reality. Please meet Robbie Swikoski with Fred Meyer, Steve Dickinson with Costco, Nicole Sabo with Ralph's, Jin Sheik with Sprouts, and Jake Johannes with Earth Friendly Products. Combined, this team has over 100 years of experience in the food industry. So the goal of our presentation today is to expand your knowledge on augmented reality and introduce you to how it can be leveraged in the food industry. First, we'll expose you to the technology shock that is augmented reality. Augmented reality will transform training and price verification. This technology will change the way we engage with our customers in an entirely new way. Augmented reality can be leveraged by CPG companies to gain incremental sales and brand awareness. And this technology can be functional in less than one week. At the end of our presentation, our ask of you is to start thinking about how you can leverage this technology in your business. Now, we're going to end our presentation with a specific example, but the truth is, our example is really just the tip of the iceberg of what the possibilities really are with augmented reality. So what is augmented reality? Well, just to make one thing very clear, we are not talking about virtual reality, where virtual reality shuts out the real world and creates this immersive experience. That's right. Augmented reality is different. <clears throat> augmented reality, or AR, integrates the real world with the physical world by overlaying digital content and images on top of what you're already seeing in the real world. Let's take a look at a quick video that shows what a potential grocery shopping experience might look like in 10 to 15 years once augmented reality glasses and content become mainstream. <laughs> Ay, no, cállate. So the first time I saw that video, I got stressed out. <laughs> and you might be thinking the same thing that I was thinking when I first saw it. I don't know if I want that level of stimulation when I go grocery shopping. But here's what I realized. It's not about me. It's about our customers in 10 to 15 years. Generation Z. Generation Z will be the first generation to have been born into the age of the smartphone. They crave information, and they can process it lightning fast. They're easily distracted, and they demand constant stimulation. Our industry is going to need to adapt in order to capture and maintain this generation's interests. What augmented reality represents is a tool that brick and mortar retailers can leverage to motivate this generation to get off the couch and into our stores. So earlier, I mentioned a couple things about how you'll have a relationship with augmented reality in the future. But in order to understand the technological occurrences that are happening that are going to facilitate that, 
It's important to understand the three major technological occurrences that contributed to the current ubiquity of smartphones. Three major changes happened in 2008 that contributed to the smartphone that's in your pocket right now. Number one, the rollout of the 3G network. The rollout of the wireless 3G network allowed large amounts of data to be transferred, enough data to allow anyone to access the internet from anywhere. Second, Apple and Google released developer kits for smartphone apps. Now, developer kits are the necessary tools that smartphone de app application developers use to build applications. Third, competition between smartphone manufacturers ramped up, and the race to create the latest, greatest, most capable device has led to the continuously improving experience that today we can't live without. So I know I've talked a lot about smartphones and cell phones, and you're probably thinking, Steve, what does this have to do with augmented reality? Well, listen closely to Robbie as he talks about the three trends that are happening right now in technology that experts are predicting are going to create a boom in augmented reality technology. So right now, 5G networks are being rolled out across the country. These networks allow the transmission of enormous amounts of data, the amount of data that's really required to help support AR platforms. Second. Apple and Google have both recently released developer kits centered specifically around augmented reality. These kits are very similar to what was released during the boom of the app stores in the mid-2000s. Lastly, companies are beginning to make large capital investments and expenditures to help further this technology. One firm, Magic Leap, in the last 18 months has raised nearly half a billion dollars to help with innovation and in pushing this technology forward. These advances in technology and funding are going to help drive the cost down for the end consumers, such as you and I, and more specifically with the wearable technology like glasses, which currently cost $1,500 to $3,500 a pair. And to use the term Steve mentioned earlier, they're still in their star tech or infancy stage. So how does AR really work? AR utilizes different triggers that are recognized by device cameras. When these triggers are recognized, the information is then cross-referenced to a predetermined database, and that information is then overlaid back to the user's device or screen. Now, we are already seeing this type of technology being used in various industries today. Sephora, for example, offers a 3D AR mirror that allows their customers to try on a wide range of product, but there's a catch. The customers don't physically try the product on. It's all done with the AR mirror. Microsoft just entered into an agreement with the U.S. Army for their HoloLens 2 technology and platform to the tune of $480 million to help train their elite soldiers. And lastly, who can forget Pokemon Go? Pokemon Go utilized AR in ways we'd never seen before. They were able to drive interest to the tune of 45 million users a day logging in and playing their game. Even to this day, they see nearly 100 million users logging on and playing their video game every month. AR has the ability to actually alter and change a consumer psychology. It can influence a person's pleasure receptors and their willingness to move towards a specific goal or target. It's all driven by the customer's needs and desire for more information. So what does this tell us about AR long term? If we can use, utilize it correctly and leverage it within our businesses, we can actually alter and change our customer's shopping habits and engage them with ways we've never thought possible before. Next, Nicole's going to walk us through some of the benefits that the retailers in the room can see by using AR. So augmented reality benefits retailers, whether it's reducing operational costs, improving efficiencies, and even reducing turnover. I'd like to talk to you about two areas today, which is training and price verification processes. I'm going to run through two training scenarios, one with augmented reality and one without and then we'll dive into price verification. So I want you to think back to your first day of work and the training that you had. I know on mine, I was excited and I couldn't wait to start. But before I could go work in the deli department, I had to go and sit in front of a computer and read training manuals for four hours. I wasn't very engaged with my store at that time. And then when it was finally my turn to go work in the deli department, the person who was going to train me to break down and clean the deli slicer had called in sick. So I was handed off to one person and then another person. And they both trained me to do the same thing 
completely different. And I remember feeling confused and wondering to myself, as a new associate, am I gonna be able to do this tomorrow when I have to do it on my own? Probably not. As retailers, we need to look at training as our first impression on our new associates. And if we don't engage them at that moment and give them meaningful training and help build their confidence on their first day, they're most likely not gonna stay with us, which causes our turnover rate to increase. So that was the past, let's look at the future. With augmented reality, I don't have to go sit in the computer room for the first four hours. I get to go work live and in the department. I put on my augmented reality glasses and I look at the deli slicer and digital images, icons, appear on the slicer. The first, step one, making sure that I unplug the slicer. And then a virtual arrow appears, telling me to turn the, the, the knob to zero. And then step by step, I'm guided in breaking down and cleaning that deli slicer. I'm able to complete the task immediately. I know what you're thinking. Will this type of technology work? It's already being used in multiple fields that require a high level of, of expertise. And those workers who are trained by augmented reality said that they felt safer, they learned faster, and were able to immediate complete task right at, the, at that time. So now we've seen two ways in which we can engage our new associates and improve training for them, reduce our turnover, and also the amount of dollars we spend on training hours. So let's dive into price verification. Currently in our stores, we spend between 24 to 70 hours a week scanning our tags to verify price with maybe a 98 to 99 percent accuracy. Our team partnered with Scandit, which is an augmented reality solutions firm, and they have software that can now be downloaded to your smartphones as well as augmented reality glasses. By simply putting on your augmented reality glasses, you're able to look at a four-foot section anywhere in the store. And with their software, you can pick up right away the prices that are correct, which would be highlighted in green, and the prices that are wrong highlighted in red, speeding up the amount of improved, excuse me, speeding up the amount of hours that it's gonna reduce in doing this process, and then also improving our efficiency. Looking into the future, augmented reality is not just a benefit for the retailers but it's gonna also help us connect with our consumers and our customers. So 41% of consumers say they're more likely to shop with a retailer that offers a differentiated shopping experience. That statistic increases to 55% when we talk about Generation Z consumers. Our research indicates that consumers view the shopping experience as a chore, something that they have to do, not something they look forward to doing. But augmented reality offers us the opportunity to engage with them on an entirely new level, to offer them information and data that we have yet to be able to, to share with them on a regular, consistent basis. So let's talk about an example. Say your store's proprietary app allows the customer to upload his or her shopping list right into the app, and then be guided seamlessly throughout your store to find every item on the list. Out walks a happy customer. Smartphones offer us the opportunity to do this today with our consumers. And as my colleagues mentioned, augmented reality glasses are a next step technology that will enhance the process even further. So our customers crave information, they crave transparency. And augmented reality offers us the ability to give them both of those. So another couple of examples. Say you have a consumer who's recently been put on a low sodium diet by his or her doctor, told you need to eat a lower cholesterol diet, or for personal preference, chooses to eat a meatless diet. Using that same proprietary app I mentioned earlier, that consumer could upload his or her dietary needs into the phone, and then as they walk down the aisles, items that met those needs could pop off the shelf sharing information with that consumer. And furthermore, they could, the items that didn't meet the, those dietary needs could be blurred out or de-emphasized. And what this does is it gives us an opportunity to interface with that customer on a, on a digital level that we wouldn't normally have um, on a one-on-one -on -one interaction. So 
I've talked to you about how augmented reality can benefit the customer. And Nicole mentioned how it benefits the retailer. But some of you out there in the audience from the CPG companies have to be asking yourself, how does this work for me? CPG companies, are you still investing in printed ads? Freestanding inserts and instant redeemable coupons, these are all promotional programs that we can quantify through a return on investment analysis. One thing we can't quantify is how many of these costly programs get thrown in the trash by the consumer each day. Augmented reality offers a solution. The solution to catch the consumer at the most crucial time in their shopping experience, at the point of purchase. Augmented reality will offer promotions and brand awareness to the consumer digitally over their field of view while they're in the store, catching the consumer at the right time. This is currently available through smartphone applications, and we're gonna show you a short video on how brands can utilize this today. Sixty-nine percent of 18 to 24 year olds prefer shopping with a brand that utilizes better technology. And from that video, you can see how consumer engagement can end up in an incremental sale at the store. Another thing we'd like to talk about is social media. Social media has changed the way our future consumers communicate with each other. Applications like Facebook, Yelp, and Instagram are the new way of the future. Consumers are going to expect to be able to comment, like, and review products in store. And for the CPG companies, this will help with brand awareness and all the new items that you're launching. Now, Jen will summarize what we've covered today. So you're probably wondering, how much does this all cost? And really, what is the true benefit for me? What can or should your company be doing to be on the front of this phenomenon? And how can we develop this in every single location? We believe in a blended reality. Do you? AR is being utilized successfully right now in so many other industries. Nicole had mentioned earlier that our team partnered with Scandit who are leveraging some of these ideas right now. So based on a fictitious chain of 100 stores, averaging $400,000 a week in sales, the cost of integrating AR technology into a pre-existing store app is $90,000 a year. And assuming that this chain has an existing digital database, this technology can be functional in less than one week. Their research has shown that by implementing AR technology, this actually increases the consumer visit to the same store by 9%. And with this sales increase, there is a 112% return on investment just in the first year. So keep in mind, this is only scratching the surface of what augmented reality can offer. And remember, the online industry just can't replicate a real life experience and engagement. So to conclude, this technology is coming. And to use the words of Tim Cook, Apple CEO in reference to AR, this is something huge that we're gonna look back at and marvel at the start of. Steve has reminded us the relationship we've all built with our smartphone and how they've literally become a part of us. And this relationship is soon to come from AR. We hope that the information we've shared with you today encourages you to be on the front of this. And again, this technology is for the next generation. <laughs> And experts are predicting this is going to explode in the next 10 to 15 years. So today we've discussed what augmented reality is, how it can be leveraged by retailers, enjoyed by consumers, and maximized by our CPG companies. Our ask today is for the CPG and the retailer com 
retailers in the room, to partner and to collaborate, to invest in AR technology to enhance the store experience. Help us revolutionize the reality of grocery. And at this time, we'd like to thank you and open the floor for any questions. Good morning. Good. Got a question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice job. Uh, pretty exciting stuff taking place uh, for the future. Uh, I guess my question is around the $90,000 investment that you talked about. Could you tell me a little bit more about what that brings to, to that uh, 100 store chain? I'll talk about that. So the $90,000 investment, we spoke to, I think we mentioned it a couple times, we spoke to Scandit, who's an augmented reality company. Uh, they were mentioned in Morning News Beat maybe a week and a half, or I'm sorry, a month and a half ago. I called them, I said, what can you guys do? And that's where we found the scan matrix. So that $90,000 uh, figure comes from doing the scan matrix for price verification. And then it also includes the, showing the attributes of individual items at the shelf popping off as augmented reality. Right now with the smartphone lens, it can be integrated into glasses, but right now most people utilize it with smartphones. Hope I answered your question. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you.